If you've ever wanted to own any of our collections, now is the time to make that purchase. I can't guarantee that these collections will be available next year. Check out our new program for ownership. Believe it or not, it'll save you a lot of money. Go to oldtimeradiodvd.com and you can learn all about it there. That's oldtimeradiodvd.com and Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah to all and to all a happy and a prosperous new year. This is the season. My name is Wednesday. My partner is Frank Jones. The chief is Captain Kellogg. December the 24th, Christmas Eve. They brought in a guy named Grudge. When I heard what they booked him on, my blood ran cold. It was a 409-6325-096704. Not believing in Santa Claus. Give the gift that gives on giving. Go to oldtimeradiodvd.com. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Read for you by Jim Dale. Preface. I have endeavored in this ghostly little book to rise the ghost of an idea which shall not put my readers out of humor with themselves, with each other, with the season, or with me. May it haunt their house pleasantly, and no one wish to lay it. Their faithful friend and servant, C.D. December 1843. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, most of us have already made our plans for celebrating Thanksgiving. But our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, hadn't given it much thought up until last Friday morning when she sat down to breakfast with her landlady. Well, it's only six more days till Thanksgiving, Mrs. Davis. I can hardly believe it, Connie. A whole year has gone by since last Thanksgiving. Isn't it awful? The years do that every year. (laughs) It seems like yesterday that I was preparing our last Thanksgiving dinner. We didn't have very much money to spend on our shopping, but we celebrated just the same. Oh, I'll never forget that meal, Mrs. Davis. A whole roast stuffed pepper. (laughs) I feel very badly about not being able to spend Thanksgiving with you this year, Connie, but I've accepted an invitation for my sister Angela. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Davis. I'd ask you to join me at her place, but she hasn't been at all well lately. So we're just having the immediate family, my brother Victor and myself. Oh, poor Angela. It seems the older she gets, the more absent-minded she gets. Yes, you mentioned it to me, Mrs. Davis. Lately, she's been worse than ever. Why, sometimes she can be talking right along and suddenly, right in the middle of a sentence... Yes? <laughs> Right in the middle of a sentence? Right in the middle of a sentence. Right in the middle of a sentence what? Right in the middle of a sentence what what? (laughs) You've been seeing a little too much of Angela. Angela? She's your brother Victor's absent-minded sister. But don't worry about my holiday, Mrs. Davis. I'll get my pearly teeth into something on Thanksgiving Day. How about Mr. Boynton? (laughs) Yum, yum. (laughs) You mean spending the day with him? Well, he hasn't asked me as yet, but I'll toss him a hint at school today. I'm certain that he'll invite you out, Connie, and then you can be sure of your turkey and all the trimmings. I don't know about the turkey, but if Mr. Boynton and I eat out, I'm a cinch to take my usual trimming. (laughs) Does Mr. Boynton always insist on going Dutch, Connie? I wouldn't say that, Mrs. Davis. It's just a coincidence that I'm buying him a pair of wooden shoes for Christmas. (laughs) Oh, but why worry about it now? As Madison star athlete Stretch Snodgrass told me in English class the other day, Live good in the present. The future never done nothing to nobody. (laughs) Oh, Stretch is a nice kid, though. He seemed genuinely concerned about my spending Thanksgiving alone. He told me he would have asked me to his home, but his folks are going out of town for the weekend with the Dentons. 
Oh, that must be Walter now. He's driving me down to school. Coming, Walter. I'll clear off the table and get started on the dishes, honey. Say hello to Walter for me. All right, Mrs. Davis. Come on in, Walter. I step over this threshold with fear and trepidation. <laughs> what do you mean? I am the editor-in-chief of the Madison Monitor. Uh, true? True. Well, I made the mistake of letting Stretch Snodgrass set up some of the type yesterday. And he sneaked an item into the personal column that cannot but be a source of great mortification to someone very near and dear to both our hearts. Who? You. <laughs> me? None other. I brought a copy with me. Uh, look at this paragraph, Miss Brooks. Let's see it. To who it may concern. That's stretch, all right. <laughs> it says, It is pitiful to be alone on Thanksgiving Day. If there is one way how people should show their real thanksgivingness, it is by sharing their dinner with some poor, unfortunate fellow human person who is alone. <laughs> any names. Oh, well, that's a relief. Keep reading. <laughs> Without mentioning any names, if somebody wants to share his or her meal with this lonely human person, all you have to do is walk up and say, you can have Thanksgiving dinner with me, Miss Brooks. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, isn't that awful? Are you going to punish Stretch? I'm not making any snap judgments, Walter. First, let's see if this ad brings any results. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Miss Brooks, but I'd like to talk to you before you go into your classroom. I think that might be arranged, Mr. Boynton. I, uh, I just read this rather peculiar notice in the school paper, and I wonder... Oh, that's a little prank that Stretch played on me, Mr. Boynton. Just pay a lot of attention to it. <laughs> When I read it, Miss Brooks, I made up my mind I'd be the first one to talk to you about it. Really? How nice, Mr. Boynton. Oh, it, it isn't easy to be alone on Thanksgiving, on a holiday. No, you're so right. Many's the Thanksgiving dinner I've eaten alone. But when I saw that notice in the paper, I said to myself, By George Philip Boynton. I didn't know your name was George Philip Boynton. <laughs> And that's just an expression I use. Uh -huh. As I was saying, I said to myself, this is one Thanksgiving you don't have to eat alone. Now, now what I, I want to ask you isn't easy for me, Miss Brooks. Maybe I can help. I promise not to order anything over a dollar fifty. <laughs> Please continue. Since I saw that paragraph in the monitor, I wondered if well, if... I'll make it a dollar even, and I'll leave the tip. <laughs> Please, Mr. Boynton, just ask me what you want to. All right, I, I will. Good. Miss Brooks, if that notice brings you more than one invitation to dinner, could I make use of the extra one? <laughs> me, Mr. Conklin? Yes, Miss Brooks. Uh, sit down, won't you please? Take this leather chair by my desk. That's it. Are you nice and comfy? Yes, sir. I'm fine, but how are you? <laughs> Splendid, thanks. This is the time of year when we should all be imbued with the true Thanksgiving spirit. That's why I've summoned you to my office, Miss Brooks, to tell you that in spite of the inconveniences you have wreaked upon me, I harbor no ill will. Well, that's very nice to hear, Mr. Conklin. I have been the source of annoyance to you on occasion, I suppose, but I... I am thankful for everything that's happened to me in the past year. Take the time you dropped that typewriter on my toe. <laughs> I just give thanks that it didn't land higher and fracture my whole foot. <laughs> that was careful of me, wasn't it? <laughs> Then when I think back to the time you stepped on my eyeglasses and crushed them, I give thanks that they weren't on my nose at the time. <laughs> but my main purpose in calling you here is to inform you that I have read the notice in this morning's monitor. Oh, that's just a joke, Mr. Conklin. It was written by one of the pupils in my English class. Yes, I could tell from its construction. <laughs> However, I want you to know, Miss Brooks that I was quite touched by that item. 
The more so since I, too, will be all alone this Thanksgiving. But what about your daughter and Mrs. Conklin? They're spending the day with Harriet's grandmother, my wife's dear mother. We asked her to join us for the holiday, but she lives almost a hundred miles away, and she thinks she's got high blood pressure or something. So nothing would do but that Harriet and Martha visit her. Bless her crotchety old hive. <laughs> but why aren't you going along? What? Me make a trip like that with my blood pressure? The doctor has absolutely forbidden it. In any event... When I read that notice, Miss Brooks, a thought occurred to me which might make Thanksgiving more enjoyable for both of us. Both of us? Yes, yes. Since we're both going to be alone, I'd like to ask you... Uh, that is, I wonder if you... Uh, what I have to say isn't easy for me, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Maybe I can help. I promise not to order anything over a dollar fifty. <laughs> Loneliness can do more to undermine a person's morale than almost anything, and... Well, if you'd, uh, that is, if, if possible... I'll make it a dollar and I'll leave the tip. <laughs> oh, please don't misunderstand, Miss Brooks. What I want to ask you is, well, if that notice brings you more than one invitation, could I make use of the extra one? <laughs> Why should you be an exception? Oh, of course, Mr. Conklin. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I've got to get to my classroom. Oh, very well, you may go. Be sure and keep me apprised of all results, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. I'm sure we'll be pelted with turkey dinners. Spirit of Thanksgiving. Are you comfy, Miss Brooks? Take this chair, Miss Brooks. Of all the... Hi, Miss Brooks. I see that you just came out of Daddy's office. Is he very disgruntled this morning? No, Harriet. He's not gruntling any louder than usual. He does seem a bit put out at having to eat Thanksgiving dinner alone. Oh, but he's not going to... Grandmother's coming down to our place after all. We're going to surprise Daddy. Oh, that should do it. <laughs> He's so sentimental about holidays. Now he'll be able to do his Thanksgiving carving just like always. It'll be loads of fun. I've already invited Walter Denton over. Good. I can't think of anyone your father would rather carve. <laughs> I know he's not crazy about Walter, but during the holiday season, Daddy's always a little more mellow. I'm going to do some of the shopping today. Mother gave me five dollars for a turkey. That doesn't seem like much, Harriet. How big a turkey are you planning on getting? Oh, just a nice eight-pounder. But will that be enough to go around? Mr. Boynton's a pretty big eater, you know. Mr. Boynton? But he'll be eating with you, won't he? He certainly will. And at what better place could he join me for Thanksgiving dinner than in the warm confines of your cozy dining room? Well, I would like to invite you both, Miss Brooks, but I've only got this five dollars. That's all Mother said to spend. Tell you what, Harriet. Give me the five dollars and I'll see that we get a big enough turkey for all of us. Well, if you really want to come, Miss Brooks, I'd certainly like to have you. And I'm sure Mother would, too. But... There have been times when you and Daddy... Well, don't you see, Harriet, if Walter's coming, you'll be doing your Daddy a good turn by inviting me. Well, how do you mean, Miss Brooks? With both of us there, we'll be an antidote for each other. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. Cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. Colgate dental cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. More than two years' research showed the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way stopped tooth decay best. Better than any other home method of oral hygiene. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the one and only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate dental cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, when...
when lunch period arrived, as luck and I would have it, Mr. Boynton brought his tray right to my table in the cafeteria. In spite of the fact that he had a nice lunch before him, he didn't begin eating, but sat with his fork poised and stared into my eyes with a deep and absorbing emotion. It was a terribly romantic moment, as Mr. Boynton leaned across the table and in a voice choked with passion said... Get any extra invites to Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> no, and get your fork out of my cottage cheese. I'm sorry. I was just wondering about that notice in the monitor. Well, you can forget about the notice, Mr. Boynton. I've wangled us both an invitation to join the Conklins for the holiday. Oh, say, that's wonderful. Mrs. Conklin's a fine cook. There's only one catch. We've got exactly five dollars with which to buy a turkey that'll feed six people. Well, how in the world are we going to do that, Miss Brooks? You and I can chip in another five dollars between us. There must be some other way. (laughs) Well, there isn't. Not unless I put up the entire amount, and I can't unless I pawn my earrings again. Oh, but Miss Brooks... I wouldn't care if I hadn't had my ears pierced. You have no idea how drafty my lobes get in November. You won't have to pawn anything. There is a way we can get a good-sized young turkey very reasonably. How? By merely eliminating the butcher. What do we do, buy the turkey from his parents? (laughs) Don't you see, Miss Brooks, we have to go after a live turkey. Well, they're much cheaper than in the stores. Why, we can probably pick one up for even less than five dollars. Well, there's nothing to it. Of course not. All we have to do is find a young turkey who hasn't learned the value of money. (laughs) Once we get a good one, we can kill it ourselves, pluck the feathers, clean it, and dress it. There must be some other way. (laughs) Believe me, this will work, Miss Brooks. I know a place about 20 miles from here. A fellow named Tobin has a turkey farm. We'll drive out after school and see what he's got. Say, it might be fun at that. A nice drive in the country. Well, sure. The fresh air will be good for all of us. All of us? You, me, and my pet frog, McDougal. He hasn't been at all well lately, Miss Brooks. What's the trouble? He can't seem to sleep. Maybe he reads too late. (laughs) I mean, where's he been sleeping? Oh, his usual place, on a newspaper in his cage. Well, there's your answer. How can anybody sleep with the news that's in the paper nowadays? Well, old Tobin certainly gave us a nice gobbler for five dollars. Yes, he did, but I still can't get too enthusiastic about having to execute it ourselves. Oh, you just feel that way because she's a hen turkey. Tobin seemed quite attached to her, too. What was it he called her again? Bernice. (laughs) Oh, isn't that cute? She knows her name. (laughs) Oh, that's nothing. Mac knows his name, too. Your frog? Of course. His cage is right beside you on the seat. Just pick it up and call to him. Oh, that's ridiculous, Mr. Boynton. I'm not going to start any conversations with McDougal. Mm. <laughs> you well, if you don't mind, I'm putting him in the back with Bernice. <laughs> there you go, Mac. You can keep each other company back there. Oh, poor Mac. He's been so apathetic from lack of sleep. He probably won't even notice Bernice. From the saying, like father, like frog. (laughs) Bernice is very interested in Mac. Oh, isn't that cute? She's got her head right next to his cage. (laughs) What in the world is Mac doing? You have just heard the frog's version of a wolf whistle. (laughs) That's one for the book. Mac is definitely smitten by that hen turkey. (laughs) Say, say, what's going on in the back seat now, Miss Brooks? Something that should be going on in the front seat. acquainted. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he's asking her out to a dance. (laughs) That'd be quite a sight. (laughs) Oh, actually, Bernice is much too tall for Mac. (laughs) Oh, I don't know. 
She's a natural for a barn dance. <laughs> do see do now I ain't bluffing. Dance too hard and you'll lose your stuffing. <laughs> oh, calm down, Bernice. I was just kidding. Now that we've got her, Miss Brooks, where are we supposed to take the turkey? To the Conklin's backyard. Mr. and Mrs. Conklin are attending a tea party, so it won't su- spoil Mr. Conklin's surprise. Well, will Harriet be there to give us a hand? Uh-huh, and so will Walter. He's bringing his AXE. <laughs> well, how do you like that? She can spell, too. <laughs> Careful with his crate, Walter. There's a slat loose on the side. Yeah, I got it, Mr. Boynton. Now let's set it down in the driveway. (laughs) Oh, what a wonderful turkey. (laughs) Sorry, Mac. You'll have to wait in the car. She's a beauty, all right. Absolutely inspiring. Oh, what a perfect combination. The lovely, graceful neck of a turkey and my trusty Boy Scout hatchet. What a charming thought. You've been seeing too many kid shows on television. But if it has to be done, the quicker the better. Right, Charmus Brooks. Want a blindfold turkey? No, but I do. <laughs> Look out, she's getting away. Oh, grab her wings, Walter. She's heading for the house. Oh, I missed her. Oh, Miss Brooks, do something. Don't look at me. I'm on her side. <laughs> She's going through the dining room window. Not what made her do that? Maybe she wants to try on one of the platters for size. <laughs> We've got to get her out of there before Daddy comes home. We want this to be a surprise. Come on in the side door. Where could she have gone? She doesn't seem to be in the dining room anymore. Maybe she went into Daddy's study. You look in there, Harriet. And, Walter, you try the kitchen. But where are you going to look? I'll take the closet with Mr. Boynton. (laughs) You kids go ahead. But, Miss Brooks, you don't think the turkey really went into the closet, do you? Who knows? It shouldn't take us more than 20 minutes to find out. the turkey's definitely in this study somewhere. Take a look behind the couch, Walter. Okay, Harriet. I'll sneak up on the little beauty with the stealth of a barefoot pilgrim. (laughs) That might be Daddy. He always forgets his key. Walter, you stay put behind that couch. Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton, follow me. Where are you going to hide us? In this clothes closet right across the hall. Quick, Miss Brooks, get in. Okay. Be right there. Hello, Daddy. Forgot my key again, Harriet. Where's Mother? She's doing some shopping for tonight. For dinner? Oh, don't mention that word. I ate so much at that compounded tea party that I can hardly breathe. I'm going into my study and lie down on the couch for a while. Oh, but you can't. I mean, you know what nightmares you get when you go to sleep after eating. Remember the time you thought there were bats in your bedroom? That was after I saw Last Weekend. Don't fuss around me, child. I can hardly keep my eyes open. But, Daddy, wouldn't the bedroom be more comfortable? I'd never make it up the stairs, Harriet. Just call me in an hour or so, please. Oh, dear. Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton, come out of the closet. Go away. Did I hear your father say he was going to take a nap in the study, Harriet? That's right, Mr. Boynton. And I'm almost positive the turkey's in there. Well, we can't be sure. I'm going to look around the back of the house. Okay, Mr. Boynton. Miss Brooks, let's tiptoe up to the study door and listen. (laughs) He's asleep already, thank goodness. Well, let's open the door then, take another peek. He just came out of that closet. She's walking toward the couch. <laughs> now he's starting to wake up. Daddy's looking at the turkey. Now the turkey's looking at Daddy. <laughs> I wonder which one will scream first. What's that? Oh, oh, it's a nightmare. Oh, I should never have tried to sleep after all that food. Look, turkey. Nice turkey. I know you're not there. But please go away. You stay here, Harriet. I've got an idea. Mr. Conklin. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mr. Conklin. What? What? Miss Brooks, is that you? 
Are you really here? What's the difference, as long as it's a nightmare? <laughs> I heard you moaning in your sleep, sir, and I thought maybe... Uh, never mind what you thought. Get this turkey out of my study. What turkey? <laughs> what turkey? <laughs> what is that? Maybe your dream turkey has an allergy. <laughs> the turkey just walked out the door. That sneeze came from behind the couch. It's just me, Mr. Conklin. Me and my trusty hatchet. Oh, God! <laughs> dream or no dream, boy, there's no reason to go berserk. We've had our differences, surely. But deep down in my heart, I've always had a warm spot for you. <laughs> hysterical. Why don't you lie down and close your eyes? How can I close my eyes with Walter standing over me with a hatchet? <laughs> Walter? Walter who? If I don't call my doctor when I wake up, I'll never go to sleep again. <laughs> oh, well, I might as well relax. That's the idea, Mr. Conklin. Uh... Take a nice long snooze. Miss Brooks, Bernice just ran out in the backyard and... Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Conklin. I didn't mean to disturb you. Oh, that's all right, Boynton. You'll disappear in a few minutes. <laughs> disappear? Mr. Conklin's been dreaming, and let's keep it that way. It's all right, Miss Brooks. The turkey ran right into our garage, and I closed the door. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? We, we just wanted to surprise you, sir. May I say, you have... <laughs> Please don't be angry, Daddy. Miss Brooks saved us a lot of money by getting a live turkey. I only gave her five dollars. Five dollars? Yes, sir. You see, you're not going to be alone after all. That was the surprise Harriet planned. Not only is your mother-in-law coming down for Thanksgiving, but we're all joining you, too. And now I have a dispatch for you. <laughs> After the tea, I saw my doctor, and he put me on a strict vegetarian diet. Harriet and her mother are going to spend the holidays with Granny as planned. As for you, Miss Brooks, kindly hand over the five dollars my daughter gave you. But we paid that for the turkey. You can have the turkey. All I want is my money. But we can't get a refund now. The used turkey market is shot to pieces. <laughs> what will Mr. Boynton and I do with an entire turkey? But that, Miss Brooks, is your concern. For once, I might add, the joke is on you. Well, I've celebrated some Thanksgivings in my time, but this is the biggest bird I ever received. <laughs> Eve Arden returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid. Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is Eve Arden. Seventy little children in one classroom. That's the kind of critical situation your community faces unless it can recruit new elementary school teachers immediately. Our increased school population also needs urgently more buildings, more textbooks, more supplies than ever. Better schools make better communities. So for improved educational facilities, join and work with your local civic groups and school boards. 
For further information, write to the National Citizens Commission for the Public Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York, 19, New York. Good night. This is Vern Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Book Show brought to you by Lustrous Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, and Gloria McMillan. <laughs> Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse and pat dry. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over the same network. Don't miss the exciting and laughable adventures of these amateur detectives. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.